funny. All right. Well, uh, thank you all for hopping on and joining. Um, we are thrilled about this announcement. We've been teasing it for a while. Pelotero, you guys have been crushing it on social media. Geiger has been hard at work at nuclear baseball. So um, actually implementing and beta testing uh, what Pelotero is, which if you're not familiar, that's what you'll learn today. You'll learn what exactly the, the program is, um, how it's integrated to hit tracks and your systems specifically, uh, and how to you know, ultimately build it into your business. We know there's a lot of different business models out there, um, and you'll have a lot of flexibility with how you integrate this to exactly what you do. So we'll cover all of those topics uh, and more and give you just a great intro to allow you to get started um, on, uh, on working with, uh, with Pelotero. So very quickly, my name is Andrew Berry. I am with Hittrax um, in Motion Systems, uh, the actual data collection device. Obviously, I'm sure most of you are familiar. Um, we have Bobby Tewksbury. Bobby is the CEO and founder of Pelotero. Um, obviously, the... Uh, well-known hitting guru as well, um, and Chris Colabello, uh, another founder of uh, Pelotero. I don't think he needs much of an introduction. Pelotero used to drop bombs for the Blue Jays, um, so we're happy to have him on. And then Dustin Geiger, uh, the Oso Blanco, the legend of the Mexican Professional League, uh, and owner of... <laughs> well, to us, you are, and the owner of, uh, of Nuclear Baseball. So thanks for hopping on, fellas. Glad to have you guys here. Thanks for having us. Very excited. Absolutely. It's been, uh, for people that don't know, it's been in development for over 18 months in terms of working directly with you guys. And then before that, you know, I was a former hit tracks owner for five, six years, lived the cage life. I get it. So th we're very excited about what we've, what we've built and what we're able to share with everybody now. Love it. So uh, let me hop on here. I've got the PowerPoint pulled up. Share the screen on that. And we will present. Can you guys see that all right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Indeed. Um, there is, uh, there is a chat open for anybody on here too. If you have questions, throw them on there. I'm going to, uh, you know, we're going to try and work through this and leave questions for at the end that we'll filter through. Um, I personally, as these guys are talking through some of the topics, will try to respond, uh, via the chat. But if you don't get a response right away, hang tight, uh, at the end, we'll try to recap and have a, a quick combo and hit, uh, on as much of those questions that you guys have. Um, so, uh, to get started, you yeah, know, just a, a quick note yeah. there, Mike, Mike Don Francesco, CEO of Hitrax, is in the chat. He's available for questions too. So he just, he just said he can help with responses. So perfect. There you Not go. There you go. So you'll get the info, uh, directly from the source. I like it. Um, all right. So again, we're excited about this announcement, uh, at Hitrax and, and, uh, Pelotero. We've been working together for quite a long time to bring this exciting new product to you. Um, as, uh, as you may know, Hitrax has been collecting data and providing a number of reports and, um, you know, doing video analysis and, and, and player progress and, and, and just providing all this information to these players and to these coaches for a long time now. Um, we have never really dived into telling players exactly what to do, you know, how to swing what specifically to train. We've always kind of left that in the hands of the coach, right? There's so many different hitting philosophies out there. Um, so this is our first step kind of diving in uh, with Pelotero as our first partner here to start diving into that and providing analysis and providing instruction on the information that's collected. So that being said, uh, I'll leave it to Bobby, you and Chris, just real quick, you know, over overview of what is Pelotero? What are people uh, looking for? I'm, I'm, I love the name. Um, I'm sure they've seen the logo and the videos and the Pelotero pickle, but what is uh, your company? What's the program? Yeah, Pelotero is really all about player development. So we're a software company. 
that really anybody that's touching the athlete's journey to player performance, that's who we're working with. So whether that's coaches, parents, players directly, uh, we are trying to help the athlete pursue their dreams and, you know, software allows us to, to do things faster and at greater scale. So we're building tools to help the player and help the coach uh, reach their dreams and, and perform better, really. So with regard to hit tracks and what we're doing with you guys, it's all about taking this amazing tool that, you know, anybody that's on this call that's a hit tracks owner, you've taken the step of purchasing. I know it's a big decision. You know, you it's a, it's a, a good investment to make into your business. How do we make it more useful? How do we make it uh, even better than it already is? And being able to leverage the data, being able to take this information and, and make it even more relevant to the player uh, to help the coach streamline their business and streamline their life to help the player perform better. Uh, that's really what we're all, what we're all about. Love it. And one of the things I thought was interesting here is, and, and that I've heard people that have beta tested this or, or at least seen the promotion about this is you are after these assessments, which we'll get into you're you know, looking at six different categories, right? Your accuracy, exit velocity, swing direction, swing plane, bat control, and power. So we're not just talking exit velo, hit it as hard as you can. We're not just talking, you know, launch angle, hit the ball as far as you possibly can. But you're really, I, Chris, I've heard you say this a lot. You're really trying to build a complete hitter. Yeah, I think that was uh, one of my huge passions and, and, and things that I think I was fortunate enough to have in my career that really led me was, uh, and I, I say this to people all the time, I had, I had a hitting coach first and then I had a swing coach in Bobby and uh, I was able to match those two worlds together uh, in my career as a player. And I think it's really important in, in today's day and age that uh, there, there's a ton of beauty and simplicity. And I think that's something that's really hit home with me a lot. So I think it's an opportunity for us and obviously how good a, hit, a product hit tracks is and at tracking data and being able to give us powerful data that is meaningful uh, to really allow us to teach people to hit better. And I, I think that's kind of one of the things that scares me about the generation today is uh, there's so much focus on the swing and I feel, you know, directly responsible for that. And my, uh, my, my co-founder and, and uh, counterpart over there will tell you the same thing. He was a, a massive uh, influence on my career, but I think merging those worlds is where players can really find their best selves. And I think that's kind of the, I would say the, the, the genesis and, and the desire that we had in building this product with you guys and uh, really what we, why we put our heart and soul into it. Love it. Love it. Excellent. So, uh, all right, taking off from there, um, what exactly is the service going to bring to your facility? We've touched on some of this a little bit already, but as you know, you know, Hitrex has collected the data and there's always been the so what. So really what you guys are saying, and I've heard you say this before, Bobby, too, but you guys are, are taking the next step. You're saying, all right, so what? We have this information. What are we going to do about it? Right. Let's take uh, an overview of where you stand, find a, the best way possible to evaluate you and all of those different uh, categories of priorities that we just mentioned um, and put it into action because for the last, you know, eight years that hit tracks has been around, really the coaches have had to put together um, these programs and, and had to decipher the data and spend a lot of time figuring out, you know, what is the right fit for the right player? What does each player need to work on? So that is what's kind of being automized here. Um, the initial uh, introduction for the players to Pelotero is the uh, assessment. Um, I guess before we get there very quickly, how do you get this onto your system? Just download the latest hit tracks update. It should be version 6.0 or 6.03 or something like that. Um, that should automatically prompt you if you open or, or restart the hit track software. Um, and then you'll create a hit tracks uh, Pelotero admin account, sorry, a Pelotero admin account that will have all of your hit tracks users pre-registered on there, um, ready to go. Now they do have to be verified Hitrax accounts and it will tell you very easily if they are um, and if they aren't, how to verify them. So 
uh, again, the first introduction to this, once you get your players in here and you create your account, is to run the assessment. So what exactly uh, is the assessment? Bobby, I guess I'll, I'll start with you. What, what are players doing when they're stepping in the cage doing a Pelotero assessment? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll touch on the now what piece. The, you, you mentioned the so what, and then I'll let Chris talk about the assessment in more specifics. So you mentioned the so what problem. I think Mike ran the gauntlet on that one, trying to educate the whole world about what launch angle means. Why does exit velocity matter? Now we all have stat cast and these are more you know normal terms in the baseball world. But previously we were dealing with the so what problem. So you tell a player, hey, your launch angle is, is five. Like, yeah, so what? What does that mean? How is that relevant to my life? I think now we're, we're starting to cross over to where it's more normal. People are understanding what that means. Now we're dealing with the now what problem. So we've got all this data. You're standing in front of the athlete and you're like, okay, so this, this matters to me. Now what do I do? So that's really what we're, we're solving with this. And I'll let Chris talk about the assessment and what it's looking at and some of the, the testing that we went through. But it, it was a very rigorous process to get this going. But it's really all about like taking that next step with the athlete and making it functional as quickly as possible. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Bobby obviously hit on um, a bunch of stuff there. And I think it's, you know, so there's this, uh, there's this piece. Can you guys still hear me? Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, there's this piece of, of, again, making things useful and meaningful. And I, I went through this as an athlete when, when tech first came out, it was funny because um, when tech really started to become a part of the game and, and really uh, it was starting to, uh, manifest itself in major league clubhouses, minor league clubhouses, and in uh, indoor training facilities. I, I was always a skeptic, right? I was the first guy, and Bobby can can obviously uh, tell you more about that. I was the guy that would just say, "Ah, I don't need this." And uh, Hit Tracks was really the first, the first piece of technology that I looked at and said, "This is this is a game changer." And uh, what you start to realize as you're going along as a player, it, it, you know, your objective, your incentives, your desires as a player is to become the best version of yourself that you can be. And uh, like to, to allude to the, to the now what problem I would always say, okay, now what do I do? You know? And I had, I got to live it from both sides really as the, as the player, as the Guinea pig and as the kind of instructor as well, or a consigliere as I like to call myself. Um, so when I, when I started really thinking about the assessment, when Bobby and I took this deep dive, we looked at so many different possibilities of how we could do our initial evaluation on a hitter. And the important thing, as you said, Andrew, about breaking hitting down into categories was allowing ourselves to take an, an objective look at, at, at things that make hit, that make complete hitters. And so when we were building out the intelligence for it, uh, there was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, sleepless nights, um, nights spent at my desk, just, you know, scrib scribbling stuff out and restarting. And, uh, and then we were able to kind of, at one point, I just kind of had an aha moment and said, this is the path we need to go. And that's why we started with the T first, because it allows us to create context immediately, right? Uh, and it allows us to paint the most clear picture we can about the hitter uh, through data capture. And what I did was I really, I thought about reverse engineering things. I went from hitters that I knew and I took a deep look at what they were and what they represented to me in my mind. And then I really started to comb through the data uh, at length. Um, and I, my intent was to try to build a system that allows a, that allowed us to really uh, essentially see the categories against each other and then really focus in, key in on areas of, of strength and weakness. And uh, from a standpoint of programming, which I'm sure we'll get into later, um, allow us to, to give the athletes their central focus for the things that should be priorities for them. Um, I, I did rigorous testing. And when I tell you rigorous, I mean, I, there, were, there were so many days that I spent in the cage just trying to figure out a plan. And my objective was uh, I, when I when I got through and I finally settled on and Bobby and I say I it's we um, we settled on kind of uh, what we wanted to do in terms of volume of swings and, and T locations and things like that. Uh, my challenge to my to, to ourselves was to go up to coaches and 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 essentially tell them 
all right, give me 10 hitters, 10 of your best hitters, or 10 of your hitters from your organization. And I want our scoring system to match the ranking that you would give me of, you know, put these hitters in order. And uh, that was when I knew we had something special was when we started, we started really kind of keying in on that, um, on those lists that, that coaches had. So um, to me, that was, uh, that was kind of a, like, you know, I felt like we had something moment. Um, I had, I have a friend who's a, a, you know, an affiliated coach. I have a lot of friends that are affiliated coaches, but uh, I asked him one day, I said, Hey, uh, can you take a look at this assessment for me? And, and you know, the kid, so can you tell me like what you think? And he goes, hang on, let me pull up our internal scouting report on the guy. So, um, you know, this particular organization does a really good job at, at measuring amateur players and, um, like they just, uh, he goes, wow, that's kind of the same thing we have. So I, I felt really good about that too. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's about measuring hitter qualities to me and to become a great hitter, you have to have great hitter qualities. And, you know, uh, as much as we want to hit the ball hard and everybody knows we want to hit the ball hard, I think at this point. Um, but I think to become complete, there are some certain other things that, you know, young players need to understand better. So you, I, I did, I did the assessment myself and I really enjoyed it. It was really intuitively guided uh, with a video describing every drill and different tee placements, different heights, things of, uh, of that nature. Um, it was, it was very simple to work through. Uh, it was a good amount of swings, but you do get a very good sample size to create, you know, the accurate results that you're talking about. And Dustin, um, again, Dustin's with nuclear baseball down in Austin uh, I know you've been really uh, an initial power user of the system and you've probably run through uh, almost, you know, most of the assessments um, that are in the books are a good chunk of them. Um, talk to me about at your facility, are you doing an assessment for every hitter? How, how exactly does that work and what's the player experience? What's the coach experience with the assessments? Yeah. So I, like I said, like you guys have said, I've been very fortunate to, be there from the beginning and all the beta testing um every single one of my players that comes in i end up giving them an assessment um just to to set a baseline which i feel like most of us do normally in our coaching um the first time a player comes in we, we take a look at them and uh create the plan off of that so this has just been the first thing that i do with everybody and we kind of build everything from there and is it as seamless as it was for me, are you, you're not having to walk hitters through much there. You really just kind of put them in there and let them go. Yeah. So I, I stay in the cage with them. Um, I treat it as a, a relationship building moment rather than just turning somebody loose and being like, Hey, just follow what's on the screen. We can do, I can absolutely do that. Or I can take one of my other instructors and put them in the cage with them. Um, but a lot of times when it's my first time with, with a new client, I want to start creating that relationship and getting the comfort zone down. So I'll walk them through the assessment um, hands-on. Now I won't have them watch all the video instruction because obviously I know where the T needs to go. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a, it's a little, a little quicker, um, but the process is still just the same. What, what is just a curious question I have that I think what people might be thinking, how long does it usually take? How many minutes are you talking for a hitter to get through the one? Full, for the full assessment? Yep. Will be about 15 to 20. Okay. depending on the player, uh, depending on the breaks that they take. Um, I, I like to try to tell them to make sure that they're taking their time. And uh, to, I want quality swings. I just don't want to, I don't want people just to get in there and just try to get it over with, like take a breath in between swings. Um, so they're basically, I, I'd, I'd say about 15 minutes is a comfortable time to get the assessment completed. So 15, quick, yeah, go quick. ahead. We had a, we had an organization in Arizona go through, they brought their whole travel ball team in. They did 55 assessments over the weekend, dead on 15 minute average. There were some kids that were 17 minutes. Some kids were 14, 13 minutes on average, about 15 minutes is, is kind of what to expect there. Awesome. An entire program. That's uh, that's pretty impressive. I like it. So you get all of these assessments. Um, that's really the first step everybody does. They do this assessment. And you see in the, on the left side of your screen, that's uh, the assessment score. Again, each, each number is based on the, uh, the 20 to 80 scouting scale. Um, and you can see efficiencies. You know, I think uh, you guys like to uh, 
refer to these at this point as the hitting priorities, right? So we can identify, you know, what are the priorities that we need to focus on, like Chris was saying, to build uh, yourself as a complete hitter. Um, we take this information and the next step is to put together a program. So we'll see an entire program on the software. Um, here's just a quick little shot of the assessment. You can see uh, in the top left corner is, you know, the guided video that will autoplay. Um, you can hide it if you know what you're doing like Dustin is, or you can let it roll through and it tells you exactly uh, where you want to put the T um, and to hit those line drives for each of those drills. Um, but once we get that information, then we move to the hitting programs. And this is uh, really, you know, the now what solution that you were talking about. How do we put this into action to improve on your priorities? Um, so talk to me a little bit about these hitting programs because you have a few options here. You can automatically generate a quick build program, which is essentially, they're all four weeks of hitting, or you can also customize this. So how do you take that information and then develop this into a full-on hitting program where a player's gonna get you know, four weeks of hitting and drills assigned to them? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go. Um, so in terms of the programming, um, and, and I think I was, I was actually trying to read uh, the stuff that was coming in along the way. Um, yeah, the, the, the programs were built. Uh, I mean, I, I hate to say this, but uh, in terms of what, what, what's been built right now, um, essentially we have variations in our templates, meaning uh, different number of days you want to work uh, through the week. I know, uh, from organization to organization that changes individual athletes, individual athlete. I know some players that are swinging five days a week, four days a week in the off season, early in the off season, others who only have an opportunity to hit twice because they're playing other sports or, uh, whatever it may be. So, uh, we, we took into consideration a lot of that stuff and the way we built Pelotero's templates currently, uh, again, was with a, with a real focus on, uh, like what's the low hanging fruit? What's the thing that this player needs to work on the most? And I, I think this will kind of line up with the question that uh, came in that I saw Mike had, had typed out uh, in defining the difference between swinging and hitting uh, in the game right now. Uh, again, at a, at a high level in, in major league baseball, there was so much focus on um, uh, internal cues, right? Like, so giving players internal cues about, swing mechanics and, and trying to think about how to move better. And I, I certainly, like I said, I, I've lived kind of both sides of it where I certainly think the way we swing is important, but I think the way we swing uh, can be built off external cues and major league baseball is really uh, kind of taking that approach now because you're seeing uh, hit, pitchers have taken such a massive leap um, with the advent of technology and, uh, you know, spin rate and understanding how to use those metrics to their favor and how to really prioritize things for themselves about what pitches they should be throwing, how to shape things differently. Uh, you know, you got astrophysicists now in the game. And so uh, what, what I tried, what we tried to do is combine really uh, the idea of, okay, let's, let's mix in internal and external cues. Let's really start to help players understand why it's important to hit the ball the opposite field. Let's help players understand uh, why it's important to be able to hit the ball at different parts of the field in different situations based on the circumstances. So a lot of that really goes into what I consider hitting information, uh, thought process, approach, mindset, uh, why it's important to make a swing in, in this direction. And, and certainly it's something that, like as we continue to to grow this platform, we plan on um, having more stuff to deliver with it as well. But um, I don't know if that really answers the question. I was trying to answer both kind of at once. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll pick it up a little bit there. So the assessment itself, we're going to give you a score for each category. But more importantly, we're going to establish your priorities of things you need to work on. When we build a program for the player, the, the way our templates work are different than kind of what's out there now when you think about what templates are. So what the coach needs to enter is give me your worst, give me your top priority. And then we're going to find a drill for that top priority based on your assessment. So it's really a data-driven solution. So if your number one problem is swing plane and the template says, give me a swing plane drill, then we'll pull in a swing plane drill. We'll find that drill for you. So it's really customizing it in a, in a very data-driven way. And then all the stuff that Chris is talking about with understanding internal cues, external cues, 
you know, if exit velocity is your biggest problem, you're going to get more intent based drills, more external cues. That's fine. If swing planes are priority, then you might need to go a little bit more internal, but it's going to flex to the individual athlete. And the template itself is very adaptable. That's kind of the definition of what we build is it's very adaptable. And, you know, we have our, our stock templates that are available to everybody. Uh, Dustin, actually, we helped him build his own custom templates. And that'll be something that's available down the road where if you want to build your own templates, you can do that. We, we're not trying to necessarily be your expert if you don't want us to be. So it's really, we've built a tool to help coaches be more efficient. We don't have to be the expert. We know a little bit about hitting and we can, we can certainly provide that to you as a stock offering, but there's a lot more, a lot more depth to the product than just us telling people what to do. Yeah, I thought that was a key feature to this. There's a lot of businesses that will, that, you know, there's, there's so many different models out there. Um, there are some that are more hands-off and really let the players come in and get their cage time and work on what they need to do. Um, and in that sense, you know, that can be something that's built towards that quick build program where right after an assessment, you know, you quick build that and it will give you the, those four weeks of hitting you determine, like you said, how many days a week you hit, uh, what the pitch mechanism is. I know there's some flexibility on that. Um, and it will do it within, I think it takes, you know, less than 10 seconds. And I had a hitting program right after my assessment, um, which was really, really cool to see. Um, and then on the other hand, you talked about the customization. So those people that are more hands-on and they're working with the players can identify what they want to use, maybe fill in some other drills that you have in that library to build a program more customized to, uh, the coaches indications of the players and Dustin, I know you've done a lot of that. You've really, you've learned a lot about this program. And now most of the time, maybe all the time you are building the custom program for the player. Is that right? So the, it is building a custom program based off of the template that we created for my players. Yes. Um, I haven't been doing too much deep dive and in, in a, like a changing of drills or anything like that. However, I, I do have the capability to do that, um, that further deeper customization. But you've, you've been, you, you essentially can and have the ability to plug in different drills and different sequences for players, right? Correct. The drills that are within, that are already set within the program, I've been able to kind of do a little bit of changing. Um, when I click into this, when I click into it, I can filter by all of the hitting drills. And then if there's one priority that I like a drill a little bit better, I can always add that into. So if there's a power drill that I like better, um, I can do a, an, um, a manual replacement of that. Dustin's a power user right now. He's getting, he right. has access yeah, to like, a, a lot of behind the scenes features <laughs> that'll be rolled out over time. But yeah, you, you did mention that too. The, yeah. Ideally the data is driving the decision-making. I mean, anytime we actually monitor, if Dustin changes a the drill, then we know we need to go, our system needs to work better. It needs to be smarter. So to, to make it as efficient as possible, he should never be going in there and, and swapping drills out, but we do have the functionality if necessary, but it's not something that, we want to be using a lot because right. it means our system's not working as efficiently as it should. Correct. I don't, I don't change many. I like, I, I mean, it's been I, a very select handful of times with players that I was working with for a, for a very long time. It was like, Oh, I like this one. We're just going to add this in there. So it wasn't really a changing of the program as much. Sure. And I think one of the <clears throat> other things you talked about that will come as a second phase of this too, is the ability to, specifically choose potentially what equipment you have for a pitch mechanism or pitch delivery right now you can choose you know there's different programs based on t and flips or flips and bp or machine but you'll be able to actually identify you know what machines are coming in uh, a little bit more precisely as this evolves too um which i thought is really effective because everybody's cage situation is different everybody's distance is different um what machines they have some maybe don't they don't have a machine whatever it might be um, Excellent. So I think the last thing before we hop in and actually show you the software uh, is just how the player performs the drill. So your customers, right, will come in, they'll run this assessment, uh, Pelotero creates this program, and you choose the days of weeks, you choose, uh, you know, really your, your custom program. And when the player comes in, say maybe it's the next week or, or whatever it might be, for their first assessment, they will, or their first program drill, they will go in and they'll get a sequence of, it seems like it, it's eight to 10 drills, usually 
uh, seems as though 30 to 60 minutes of hitting, depending on how many days they select uh, per week. And the piece here that was really cool when I started the program is these visual cues. So you still get the great videos describing the drill from Colabello and, and showing the player what they should do, which as a side note, personally, I think is very fun and interactive when you actually do have the audio coming through. I, I caught myself like playing around, you know, you'll, you'll end a session and say, great job. You know, now on to the next one. I'm like, all right, let's go, Chris, tell me what's next. So I thought it was really, it was really engaging. Just trying to be inspirational, man. I'm just trying to, I'm, I remember what it's like <laughs> to be a little kid. I'm just, I still haven't grown up. So I, I know what it's like. It, it was, we'll, we'll leave there. There's a few Easter eggs in there for you to hide, uh, for you guys to find with Chris too. So you have to check that out. Um, but the visual cues showing you, all right, this, you know, in this drill, you want to hit the ball between whatever it might be, 10 to 20 degrees at a certain region of the field. And you'll see the field highlight here. Um, and within those parameters on the left side, uh, if we are asking for a minimum exit velocity or if we are asking for a specific vertical launch angle or a directional, you know, horizontal launch angle um, for that drill, it'll give you an immediate visual cue, thumbs up, thumbs down, did you pass, did you fail, and you can make those adjustments. Have you, I guess, uh, Dustin, maybe for you real quick, have you seen those cues help players in those drills throughout the programs to be able to just make you know, quick adjustments, be it maybe just a little bit mental there to try and lock in on the next hit. Absolutely. Um, being that they get that instant feedback on the screen of that green thumbs up or the red thumbs down, uh, you see a lot more uh, players, a lot more locked in to doing the drill properly. Uh, they don't want to see red pop up on the screen. So rather than just kind of coasting through their, their drill or coasting through their exercise, they're like, all right, I want to make sure that I'm doing it and I'm doing it correct. Yeah, it's just a, a very, very intuitive run through. I don't know if uh, uh, if you have uh, Chris or Bobby any more to add here before we share the software, but I'll, I'll probably turn it over to you. Yeah, we've we've tested this with seven year olds, professional players, every age in between. Kids get absolutely locked in on this stuff. So these parameters are going to flex based on the player's needs. So the launch angle cue. That's, you know, if a kid's popping up too much, he's getting under the ball too much, his tendency is to miss under, we're going to give him cues to get on top. If they're early too much, we're going to force him to hit the ball oppo. It's, it's really adaptive to that athlete's needs. And if a kid misses by, a, by 0.1, they get, they're, they get mad. The coolest thing about this is they're not chasing exit velocity and they're not chasing distance. It's, we've told, this isn't a secret to Mike, and I, I don't know if he likes when we say it, but one of the best things and the worst things about hit tracks is it gives you those the exit velocity and, and distance numbers every single swing. And a tendency is for kids to just chase those numbers and they take bad swings as a result. With this, they're getting feedback and they're actually developing awareness. They're developing feel. They're making adjustments immediately without you having to tell them because they look up and they're like, oh, I pulled it too much. Or, oh, I got under it too much. They're, they're chasing metrics that make them better hitters versus just chasing big numbers that they might be developing poor swing habits as a result. Love it. Chris, any final thoughts here? I'm going to. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I, I, I am so, I'm just excited to be able to help as many players as we can, as many coaches as we can. Um, that's kind of our goal here. That's our mission. Um, the, the, the whole, to me, it's about the ability to pay it forward. Um, and I wish, and I, I've been saying this for a while now, the, the only, I don't want the reason that somebody doesn't understand something to be because I didn't say it out loud, right? So uh, with hip tracks, with what we're doing with you guys, and obviously the, the ability to have a, a much, a much bigger reach than uh, being in the cage with one, any one individual at one time. Um, I want to be helpful. I want to be an asset and, um, and really help grow the game. It's uh uh, one of the one of the beta testers said uh, we're part of the baseball preservation society. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So I guess that's uh, that's kind of what we're doing, trying to merge merge old school and new school all into one. And and really, I think that uh, will allow us to, to to bring the best combination of of results and opportunity for players. Love it, Bobby. Are you are you able to share the screen there? Is it do I have to allow that somehow here? Ready to go. All queued up. Oh, you got it. Boom. Yep. There you go. All right. So we got, this is the, uh, the actual software, 
of Pelotero within it tracks because it's exactly what I was going to do. So once you update your software, you'll log into administrator, <laughs> excuse me, administrator, and you'll see uh, that green P logo right there. And I'll tell you what, uh, personally, it's kind of a, a breath of uh, fresh air to see some different colors here. So uh, yeah, go ahead, fire it up. Yep. So just click on the button. You kind of get dropped into Pelotero world here. So the first thing that happens here, the first time you log in, you're going to get prompted to create an account. So that's creating an account with us so that everything gets synced, synced to our web application. <clears throat> everything that you do here is available on our website. So you can administer players and do what you need to do. Uh, we know that you're not always going to be at the kiosk do, doing stuff. So that's available for you. We have a manage account button where you can update your, your details and do subscription stuff. We'll get into that later. Uh, and then you get your player list. So this will automatically update. We can see Elena. I, I added her. If you, if you don't know Elena, she's one of the, the sales reps. So <clears throat> if the player's not verified, this button will show up and you just click it and it will send the email. Uh, they just go through the online process. We have some links available for how to get players registered beforehand that are helpful. Using the app is really the easiest way to do it. Um, but there's a web process and an app-based process to do that. So if you send that email, you click it, they go through, you just click this little refresh button, it'll update the list and it'll, it'll give an update. So that button would go away. Uh, we got some players in here. Miguel just hit his 500, so we'll go, we'll go Miggy. It's a nice database you got there. <laughs> yeah, we got, some studs. we got some studs, but we usually, yeah, we're just a lot of demo accounts. Looks like, looks like Miguel has some priorities he needs to address though. Yeah, we just use keyboard <laughs> shortcuts for demos. So <laughs> it'll pull up the most recent assessment so we can see the overall score. Uh, this is on 2080 scale. If you're not sure what that means, you can click on this and it'll give you a little, a little snapshot of what those mean. Uh, it'll tell you when the last assessment was. We've got these quick buttons on the right, so you can go right to your programs. You can build a program or you can take another assessment. So uh, we'll go into the assessments real quick. We won't do the whole thing, but uh, it's going to just confirm that it takes one credit to do it. And then you just hop right into a, a traditional Hitchrax experience. We've stripped down some things. Everything here is guided. So this is Chris taking us through. So it's going to be uh, just an explanation of what the assessment is. This is if you're first time doing it, go ahead and watch all these videos. Uh, you could set somebody up in, in a cage and not be with them and they could follow all these prompts. Andrew, you did that and it, it, it just walks through the whole thing. So we'll skip that video so we don't need to watch it. Um, each drill will also have its own video. So I'll pull up the first one and it's going to tell you exactly where to put the T. It's literally telling you like put the T here relative to your front foot, uh, literally walking you through every single step along the way. So if, if you have any doubts about how to do it, it's telling you exactly what to do. And then once you get in here, it's just your hit tracks experience. So I got keyboard shortcuts. Uh, we stripped away exit velocity because we don't want kids chasing numbers, but you hit, we got shortcuts. It's just normal. This was, this was one of the things that as an experience here where you don't see the metrics, uh, when I was doing the assessment, it really helped me focus on just, you know, this is my objective. Here's what I'm trying to do. I'm not going to, you know, spin out or do anything. It, it made me kind of lock in and think a little bit um, and just focus on being a hitter. I, I, I really like that aspect. Yep. So we've got a status bar across the top. It's uh, seven different drills. So obviously when you hit the ball, it's going to progress the status bar. Foul balls do count because if you hit a foul ball on this, we need to know because that's not good. So we had some testing with that. But you see the drill list on the right, it'll progress through the drills. Um, and that's kind of what the, what the assessment looks like. At the end of that, you literally just click a button and the whole thing gets scored in about, in, it's less than 10 seconds. It depends on server load and stuff like that, but it's less than 10 seconds. So once you have that assessment completed, you can build a program. So uh, we can do that from the dashboard where we can build a program or from the programs page, I can click this plus button and we're going to go through and build a program right now. So there's two options. We have a quick build where you're literally just going to pick the template you want. So here we can see Dustin's custom program. If the hitter's going to come in three days a week, you click three. And then this is a T only, and this is T and flips. So you can just kind of filter these out. If you want a four day program or a two day program, that's all there for you. Um, I want to do the, the custom build to show a little bit more detail. So with the custom build, we can do post 
assessment data. So if you're using a bat sensor, if you want to do some med ball testing, vertical jump stuff, grip strength, we can add that data in and this will start to influence programming. So the more we know about the player, the more we can help them and program for them. Uh, grip strength is a simple one. You get a, uh, the little gripper on Amazon for 20 bucks. I've never had a player hit a ball a hundred miles an hour without gripping at least 125. So there's, there's correlations here that we can use to help these athletes get better. So you save all that data and that happens sometimes. Let's try that again. Do custom build. We're gonna do a, we're gonna do a straight up. We'll have to figure out what's going on here, but we'll do a quick build. So we'll pick Dustin's program, confirm that. So right now that program is building. It's this is how long it takes. We're doing this in real time. Um, I know that that error hop happens when I do demos. So it, I, we haven't had that experience, but if it does, let us know. So now that whole program is built. So we got that full custom program right here. Built in, did anybody time it? 10 seconds. So we Probably have that, less. Yeah, that full program was just built. And now we have all of our parameters, all of our drill previews. Everything is now available and that hitter can actually do the program live in real time, <clears throat> ready to go. So we've got videos for everything. Tells you the T position, tells you where to hit it, tells you the launch angle. So we can now start this workout. I'll skip the video again because we don't need to see it. But now we've got this, what we call the go zone right on the screen. So if I hit a ball to right field, we can see I did not achieve the correct launch angle and I did not achieve the correct batter ball direction. So I got two thumbs down. If I hit it up the middle, I hit it in the proper direction, but I didn't hit it high enough and I can hit it too high. So now I've hit it the correct direction, but the wrong launch angle too high. So you can see how quickly this is happening. You can see the parameters right on the screen. Now I'll do one. That one should be roughly... There we go. So now we've got a good, a well executed drill. We're getting the feedback right on the screen, five to 20 degree launch angle, negative 10 to 10 on the direction. And it's just right on the screen there. Again, if I yank a ball way over here, get a little pull happy. Again, we're back into those, that negative feedback. So it's really, really instant, uh, happens real, like live in the moment that that feedback comes up. So you can go through that program. Uh, we can see the different days. If you want to, you can scroll through all those. You can get, you can pull up the different parameters. Um, this one's a really cool drill called around the world. It's really dynamic. So it, it actually steps you through. So it's, uh, that one's a really fun drill, but yeah, that's, that's the basic rundown. Is there anything else you want me to, to dive into with this? No, I think, I think that was great. I think personally, again, using the software and, and the actual mechanism within it uh, was extremely efficient uh, and did not take any training. So don't be afraid to hop in there. I think uh, you should be able to very easily, um, you know, figure that out. Uh, and the interface, like I said, is just smooth. The videos that Colabello has uh, load instantly and pop up and, and it just gives you a clear picture of exactly what to do. Um, what I do want to do now uh, is talk about how to implement this, right? So you guys have built this incredible tool. Um, Geiger, really, you've put this into action. I know, Chris, you do a lot of uh, training you have for quite a while as well, too, um, and had your hands on this. But I want to talk about now, how do we build this into uh, a business? How do we build this into a company that may, may have membership so that may do lesson packages or just cage rentals? Um, and where, you know, where do we attain the, uh, the value? So I'll pop up the PowerPoint once more. Um, and, you know, and initially, like I was saying, what is the value for coaches? I think the first thing that we talked about yesterday in our little powwow is the fact that you are removing, uh, the need for coaches to dive into CSV files and to look at all these charts. For example, um, you look up at, uh, at this chart here, uh, which is a hit tracks report, one of our, our uh, newer, better reports, in my opinion. And this is taking two sessions um, side by side, point of impact, spray chart, 
overlaying our launch angle report and in the top right corner showing the metrics from the first session the metrics from the second session and the progress right that's just that doesn't happen with magic that there's a lot of work that happened in those you know two months in between june and august uh there was a lot of work that was put in by the coaches and now what you've done is really been able to help them remove the need to dissect all this information and spend hours in front of their computer right maybe so dustin maybe you can talk to this a little bit how, how has this changed the way you approach this how has it changed your job really yeah so one of the biggest things that i think a lot of instructors deal with is time management um i myself have young kids at home and i want to be able to spend as much time with them as possible so in the past when it was hours upon hours you know spent building these programs whether it was through like an excel spreadsheet where it was like, hey, I have three options, you know, good, bad, average, and then I tag drills to those specifically. This is doing it automatically and making everything happen a lot faster. Um, so from a time management, we see it takes 15 minutes to do an assessment and then 10 seconds to build a program versus an hour long hitting session. And then going back and looking at all the data points and then creating the program off of that. So we're immediately cutting our time cost. Um, for that. Uh, I've done this in multiple different ways. I've done individual lessons. I've done group lessons. And it, uh, you know, being able to, to pull in more clients at the same time, uh, and all of their coaching being already directed, where I don't have to just remember it off the top of my head or be like, hey, what did we work on last week? I literally have the program that they are following along that I know is going to help them get better. Um, it's just, it, it's, it's a little bit of a peace of mind. And then time management for me is the biggest thing. One of the things that Bobby and Chris talked about that I thought was really kind of a game changer because this is a game changer, but one of the, the just the concepts is the idea of becoming a hitting coordinator, right? You don't, mm -hmm. you don't need to dissect every piece of data and, and calculate all of this yourself. You don't need to, handhold through every single little step of the way and, and give an attaboy every single swing. Don't get me wrong. That stuff is great. And, and the interaction, and like you said, the relationship with the coach and the player is pivotal to them buying into this, but it does free you up to become more of this hitting coordinator. Um, and, you know, ultimately have other people that will, you know, potentially get the players through step-by-step -step instruction while you can, you know, just have a broader view of what's going on. Is that, am I, am I in the right direction there? Yes. It, it helps us, I think more coach rather than have to create programs, coach and do all of that. So if there's an internal cue that we need to give, like, Hey, I want you to, I want you to try to feel this in order to execute the drill properly. Um, it's easier for us to do that versus having to be like, okay, do this drill. And then, okay, no, I want to do this drill. And now I want to do this. It, it, it allows a, I guess a rubric to, make little finite changes off of um, or little cues and coach versus all like everything trying just to like throw stuff at the wall and see if something sticks. I have a, lot of, thoughts on, I have a lot of thoughts on this. If you want me to go off here. I, I, I would love it. What, what are you? So <laughs> it's, I mean, think about that. Taking all of this time and effort and energy to these coaches and instructors that work from you know, some of them work a job nine to five and then they work in the facility from five to nine and they'll analyze data at their home in front of the computer, whatever it might be like they are. And they and they may have you know kids and families at home. Think about how much freedom this gives them to focus and scale their business. Yeah. So I lived the cage life for about 10 years. I'm very intimate with it. The uh, one of the biggest challenges is you're not making money unless you're in the cage. So that transition to the hitting coordinator role. Uh, the, one of the biggest aspects of that is where's is the instruction coming from? So if you're, if you're a coach who's stuck in the cage, because you're the one providing the instruction, what this allows you to do is have the, the platform will provide the instruction and then you can coach your coaches on how to deliver it. It doesn't rely on you to be in the cage to deliver that information to the player. So it really streamlines that whole process. Dustin, his, his hitting facilities literally walk out the door next door. So, he's come over to my office multiple times this summer been like, Hey, I got hitters going right now. Like I'm making money and I'm not in the cage. And I was like, look yeah, at him smiling too. Look at him smiling. Oh, yeah. If anybody gets him, he's smiling. 
but it, it, it's such a big deal to be able to make money when you're not working and to be able to deliver quality information still like he's running group lessons and they're, he, they're being coached by college players. Does Dustin, a professional level hitting coach need to be working with 12 year old athletes? No, you can pass those off to a college player and then the college player can be delivering that program to the player. So it's, it's allowing you to maintain quality, but work with more players and not have to be there. So it's, it's like a win, win, win situation where the, the athletes getting really good instruction the, the volume of the facility is going up. So you're able to make more money and he doesn't have to be in the cage every single hour. And yeah. I know some of his numbers, he was, he went from doing all private lessons, you know, charging a hundred bucks an hour, paying the facility 30, clearing 70 bucks an hour, which is pretty solid. I know not everybody can charge a hundred dollars an hour, but he went from doing $70 an hour. And then this summer he was doing over $200 an hour that's you'd like triple your dollar, tri triple your revenue per hour and work less hours that like, that's incredible. And that's the tool that we built. That's, that's what we're offering to people. And every facility is different, right? There's some facilities do all private lessons. Some do memberships, some do group training. Some are very team-based. We have options for all of those scenarios to, to be able to create this kind of hitting coordinator role where you can, have access to the information and have access to the instruction and not have to be the one delivering in real time to the athlete. I have something to add real quick too. Um, so as we were going out and, and meeting with coaches and, and facilities organizations to talk about how, you know, things that they would want in the platform, uh, a lot of things that organization heads of organizations, uh, people that owned, uh, whether it be travel organizations or indoor facilities uh, said to me was, they've always tried to create a systematic approach at a universal language in hitting, right? And now that's a difficult thing to ask for because uh, as similar uh, as the three, you know, the three guys on this call are, Dustin delivers messages differently than I do and Bobby delivers them differently than I do. And I think we're all trying to get to the same place uh, ultimately, but the way, the way we speak is different. But the idea behind having universal language and uniformity without making it static to players without having the same drill for different players right like where one one player might need one thing and another player might need another I think our objective as hitting coaches should be to allow players to become the best version of themselves two things to that one is we have to put in a layer of accountability for players right there's a layer of accountability for young players you can tell me you want to be good all you want but the proof's in the pudding, man. Like you got to go do the work. And from an instruction standpoint, and this is the second piece of it. I did private lessons forever when I was in the minor leagues and uh, I had private lessons and I had group training and I, I, that was how I survived in the off season. And I always felt like better work got done in group settings. Cause number one, it, it allowed for competition, but, uh, and number two, you had your friends and it, it built in breaks. So, uh, I think what Dustin's doing is, is in line with the idea of uh, you're, you're now putting, and again, like the, the, the whole concept behind this is like the burden has to be on the player ultimately. And I know that we, as coaches, we feel, sorry, I'm not a coach. I'm a consigliere. I messed that up. Um, but we, as, uh, as influences on players feel like we want to give players everything we have, but there is a, there is a very, uh, I guess organic point in time where players really start to understand things. And now the fact that we can challenge them through technology. And I think if you really look at the, 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 the younger generation now, and uh, this is, this is not a knock or a, an attack at all, but they communicate better through technology. They communicate better through the screen. So we wanted to be able to pass those messages along through, through the tech. And I think, you know, hopefully we've done it. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. I think, one last thing to hit on on the overall concept here is that that we really haven't said is data is you know it's the new normal it's it's really to a point now where it's expected right so just saying that you have technology in your facility is okay great you know that's that's pretty much implied it's now you know what do you do with it how do you implement it how do you communicate it to the players how do you knowledgeably, you know, build that into your business and benefit player development, 
right? That is the new, that's the new service. It's what do you do with this information? Um, and I think building this into different programs, like we talked about, like, like you talked about, Chris, I think yesterday, um, we have so many different business models out there, right? We have monthly memberships, we have uh, cage rental retail cages, we have, you know, guided uh, instruction, guided instruction, I guess I'm used to saying that, but hitting instructors, you know, people will do four or five lesson pack. Um, talking about the different ways to build this in right off the bat, to get going tomorrow and say, okay, we're going to start implementing this program. I think from our conversation initially, one of the easiest things to do, and I know Chris, you were talking about this too, is do an assessment, right? Do an assessment. And if you are renting cage time, or if you are doing initial instruction training, that's a service, right? You can charge for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think, you know, we, we tried to, as we built this, we tried to consider uh, Bobby, as he said, lived the, the facility life. Uh, I was very much uh, a, a hitting instructor for a long time as I was a minor league player. And we tried to consider uh, the benefit for both parties in this, right? So from, if I had to tell you what my, my primary focus is, I will always tell you the players at the center of my universe. And I think Pelotero's mission is to put the player really at the center. Um, but right behind that is the coach, right? At, right next to that is the coach. He's in parallel and uh, he or she is in parallel, I should say. And I, I know that there are tons of coaches that care very deeply about helping their players uh, become that best version of themselves. So we really wanted to, to, to have a benefit for them as well, whether it be from a standpoint of making money or, or, or living a better lifestyle, those were all considerations as we did this. And, um, you know, again, I think we're, we're fortunate to, to have such a great partner in you guys at hit tracks and, and, uh, you know, uh, hopefully we're making a, a really cool product even better. Yeah, I, I think so. You, you hit on all those topics, and I think it's phenomenal. I just thought the assessment idea right off the bat was was so easy to implement, right? And talking about uh, going a little bit further, maybe you know, as you were a private hitting instructor, as you know, Geiger is now, you potentially could have these lesson packages, right? If if you are providing and integrating this technology with a set of four lessons, right? That again is absolutely an increased uh, added value. And there are really two methods you could do here. Bobby, I know you're a huge fan of making this the normal, right? Make this something that every player does. And the benefit of that side, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to fill your cages more, right? I know, I know you've been a, a big proponent of just making this something to get more people in your cage more often. Yeah, there's a, <clears throat> there's a lot of considerations here because every, every business is in a different stage. A uh, couple key points to make. Every athlete gets a complimentary assessment. So they can, you can use this as a marketing tool to get people in your building as we, as you get started here. So whether you charge for that or not is really a business choice. If you're a facility that's kind of jammed up, you, you have a lot of clients coming in. Yeah. Go ahead and charge for the assessment. If, if you're in a position where you need to build your client base, you maybe you have 50 members, but you want to get to a hundred give it away for free. Use it as a tool to get people in your building. Um, I, I always used $100 an hour as my benchmark for how much revenue I wanted a cage to do. So $100 per cage per hour. If you bring an athlete in for an assessment and build them a program and you can get them to commit to an eight-week program, a 12-week program, five months worth of training, every assessment you do should be leading to like $500 to $1,000 of revenue for your business. And depending on how you structure that, whether you're selling lesson packages or memberships or group training, that's up to you. That's every, every business has their structure and do what you need to do for that. But you can bring every athlete in without a cost from a credit standpoint. And we're going to give every facility six credits to be able to build three programs to kind of test it out. So you can try it, see how it feels, see, what, see if you like it. Um, but it's really, yeah, it's every business is different. So this tool is really going to either help you become more efficient. So somebody like Dustin, he needed to transition from a jam-packed private lesson schedule to 
group training so that he could work with more athletes because he was he had no room in his schedule and increase his margins because i mean ultimately we want to help athletes that's the f- number one priority is helping athletes but we also need to run a business and if he has an opportunity to make more money help more athletes and get free time back how is that a bad thing like that's the dream scenario so like th- th- this really checks a lot of boxes and Pelotero, like my role with Pelotero is helping facility owners and like really like anything that we can do to help you guys be successful is in our best interest. So we're here for you. We want to support that. We're going to, Andrew, we talked yesterday about doing more webinars about implementing this stuff, but yeah, I mean, being able to take this data and make it powerful for your business and to help athletes, it's, it's a, it's a huge, huge offering. Yeah. And one of the other things that, uh, Mike San Francesco brought up to just in a conversation this morning is, you know, the concept I, I, I just called it the Pelotero package, right? Just putting this into, you know, this, this is a, this is a, a package and a complete program that you buy into. So for some sort of, um, you know, upfront cost, uh, you can include the initial assessment, the four week program and a follow-up assessment at the end. Right. You can sell this one month package, uh, which is going to be developed into ultimately a staged off season program. As they finish that second assessment, they have these new priorities that they can re up and continue in month number two. So you, you could be talking you know, about doing this year round with players or players come in in November, December, January, and they run through their three phases and get ready for the season in that sense. So I, I, I like that idea of the Pelotero package where you can provide the cage time for this for each uh, each assessment and each drill day, right? Uh, somebody did ask, uh, I think it might've been um, uh, Mr. Benson out in, uh, in Washington. He, he asked if the assessments or there, the drills have to be done at the hit tracks, right? Obviously it's a lot more engaging if they are, but there are days where players can take the drills and access their Pelotero account at home and do these drills at home if they need to, or in a different cage if it's booked up. So there's flexibility there too, um, that you can put them in another cage if you have multiple people doing a program on the system. You don't just have to do it on the hit tracks. You won't get the feedback, um, obviously the immediate feedback and, and, and the guided cues, but you'll still get those awesome videos. You'll still get um, walked through every single step of the way. I can, uh, I can demo that real quick too. If, if that's, you want me to demo real quick, the website uh, on the, on the website. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's hold off on that just because we're, uh, only at, we're at an hour, but I think maybe a second webinar with the Pelotero website is definitely in order because there's a, there's a lot to digest there. This is everything we've talked about is on the hitch tracks kiosk, uh, yeah. kiosk. There is a whole nother world that you can dive into as the, hitting coordinator, if you will, or the player to your seasons that you mentioned, which are just very impressive. So uh, let's hold off on that just time-wise. Um, I don't yeah. know if we had a boatload of questions. We've got a few here. It looks like- Andrew, let me go ahead and answer this one from Sam. Go ahead. You um, got the, it. Question, the question was, do you build your groups based on strengths, weaknesses, based on the assessment? Uh, the nice thing about doing the assessment and the, the templates that I provide to my players, all the template is the same. So every player will have three T drills, two front toss drills, and two BP uh, exercises. That's the, the template that is, is under nuclear baseball right now. Um, so I don't have to have them, the people that are like skill together. It's going to customize the drill and it's going to flex. It's still going to be on the same ball delivery method where it's the T or it's the front toss, but the drill per the player is going to change based off of what their assessment says. Um, so it, it takes away that us having to manually create the group um, and like try to think through who really works well together. I've had 12 year olds in with, with college players before. And the cool thing with that is that the 12 year olds are learning from the college players. The college players are seeing stuff happen a little bit slower with the 12 year old. And now they're seeing what kind of swing mechanics need to change or how they would do adjustments. And I think it, having a little bit of the varied age group actually helps both parties out um, tremendously. So it, it, it's definitely giving us more flexibility. I hope that answered that. That was awesome. Yeah, I think for sure. I, I know uh, Mike also addressed um, 
another question here, but the question uh, posed was, is there a way to manage what players uh, get specific credits? Um, Chris, I think you said you wanted to tackle that one there. Sorry, which one? The, the credits question? Exactly, yep. Yeah. Um, so the, the, from a credit standpoint, uh, the, the facilities, the organizations are the ones currently in, uh, in, in this first iteration that uh, organizations will be the, the ones that sign up. Uh, we're putting kind of the power in the coaches hands through the HitTrax portal, um, through the HitTrax kiosk. And uh, essentially, they're going to be able to distribute credits as they like. Uh, we have different levels of subscriptions, uh, individual credits. Uh, can be purchased as one-offs for, you know, even if somebody wasn't a Pelotero subscriber, they could still purchase credits and get an assessment or a program uh, generated in-house. Um, we, we've tried to create a package that essentially allows a, a, to discount as much as possible. And the unlimited packages, depending on how many athletes you have coming through your facility, if you're a, if you're a program, a travel ball organization that has 200 players or 300 hitters that are coming through, uh, unlimited is the way to go. Um, and then, you know, the different, the different levels are all kind of described as, uh, I think, as, as seamlessly as possible uh, right there within the platform. So uh, it should be able to answer questions. If not, I did, we did a bad job. The credit uh, system is, it's like an inventory system where uh, there's, there's so many different ways to do subscriptions where it's like, hey, you get up to 50 athletes, you get up to 100 athletes. And it, it's kind of, it's confusing and what, what essentially happens is we have an unlimited plan where it's just kind of turned on. It's like turn on a light switch. You can do as many players as you want. There's no credits that you're dealing with. It's just on. And then we have credit options and we have different packages you can subscribe to. You can buy them in bulk, but there's, there's different options based on how many athletes you're working with on a regular basis that it'll make financial sense depending on your scenario. So it's really just inventory. So if you buy 240 credits, then you have those credits to do whatever you want with. So you, it's one, one credit for an assessment, two credits for a program. You can use those however you want. It's, it's really your business set up and your, whatever considerations you have to be able to, to spend those credits. It's like audible and like cell phone minutes kind of, that's the best way that I try to explain it. It's basically uh, to it's inventory. To tackle one of the other questions, this is completely off topic, but I, I wanted to get to this before because I, I, I thought about it. Uh, one of the things we didn't necessarily mention, I don't think, was that the scoring system flexes by age group. I don't know if we said that out loud or not. Um, so technically, if you have a 14-year-old who scores at a certain place, they're being scored against other 14-year-olds. They're not being scored against 18-year-olds and, and, and so on and so forth. So um, in terms of the, the, the scale and the way it was built, really, um, when you go into the platform, there are there is a description of, of essentially what each category is. Uh, and what it represents. Uh, again, like to me, the most important thing is trying to identify uh, what a player is capable of. And then in an apples to apples kind of comparison really dictate uh, which pieces are, are kind of, um, again, what I call low hanging fruits. Like what are the first things that we need to go grab from the tree? Um, and I think that's, uh, that's something that I've seen most young players without instruction, without coaching, they have this tendency to just come in the cage and they put the tee down the middle and then they flip to each other and then they throw BP and then it's over. So uh, from the standpoint of like what it can provide for an organization, obviously when like, you know, you have uh, the, the 12 on one or 12 on two coaches uh, practices in your cages, uh, the ability to provide obviously custom programs for each individual athlete, I think is, uh, is a big win. I've seen a couple different organizations that are doing that already which is uh it's exciting yeah i know that we can help yeah for yeah, sure from a, from a facility standpoint um i've had multiple teams already reach out about you know hey we can't do a package where we commit like all of the guys come in and all the guys train but hey like we want your coaching still so they have already agreed i've had two teams within the last three days say hey i want to bring guys in um, assess the entire team give programs for the entire team so that during their team practices, now they're having their guided experience. And it's like, like you just said, CC, acting almost as an additional coach or like, hey, you guys have your program, you know what you need to work on. Now I can just kind of check in and make sure that I'm managing the whole thing rather than being locked in on one particular player while little Johnny's in the corner climbing the fence and somebody else is playing in the grass. So it, it's awesome. The, uh, 
one thing I think we didn't really dive into, which I think is okay, um, is all of the pricing options, right? Ultimately, at the core of this, a credit is 10 bucks, right? That's the most a credit would be. One credit is 10 bucks, you can buy that. Um, and like we mentioned, the customer quick build programs are two credits. So you're talking four weeks of hitting for 20 bucks for those players, right? So that you can start to take mm -hmm. these numbers well, with the free assessment, it's twenty. With the first yeah. player, get, with the player getting their first free sure. assessment, would be 20. three total credits, thirty dollars. Yeah. yeah, three credits. Yeah, one one for uh, if you're doing a one off. Yeah, for sure, the first ass the first assessment's free, so you can do a free assessment and, and spend twenty dollars to do do a program, right? Two credits to do a program. Um, in that Pelotero package option, there may be another assessment at the end, to show the progress, or maybe what comes next after you have fixed uh, whatever priorities or worked on whatever priorities you have. Um, and then there's plenty of bulk buy options to reduce the cost. And like you said, the unlimited subscriptions, um, all of that is within the Pelotero module within Hitchrack. So you can see all of those and pick what works best and you can purchase as you go or as your numbers increase, see, okay, you know, let's, let's, you know, let's just make this uh, an unlimited or X amount of credits per month. And uh, we'll be able to easily clear that with what we're doing. Uh, the six free credits, like you guys mentioned, I think are a big piece of that because ultimately with a free assessment that would give three players the potential to set up a program um, or however you want to structure that. You don't, you don't like, what do you, what do you, you don't like that, Chris? No, I'm just figuring who are the, th it's going to be the three favorites in every facility. It's me. <laughs> it's, it's typically it's I mean, the ones that the coaches know the best. They're yeah, going to yeah. bring players in that they know. So when they do the assessment and they get the results, they're going to be like, does this check out? Does it pass the eye test? Does this, so line up with what I believe. And then, yeah, I mean, and that's reasonable. I think that's the best way to do it is, is pick three players that you know, well, what you would expect the results to be, and then see how, see if you see if the numbers are good. We, we feel very good about the data and, and what the results are. So try it out. I, I agree. I think the time that we're at right now, uh, it's August. It's a perfect time to give this a test run and hop in and start using this to prepare for that big influx of players. Maybe in Texas, they start getting out on the field now, but uh, most, most of the spot around the country, people are working their ways back indoors. Um, but it's a great time to get your hands dirty, get acclimated with this and prepare for a big off season coming up. Um, I think the, the last question that I think Mike also got to is, is softball specifications. This, this is all perfectly compatible with softball. And with the Hitchcock's player profile, they will already have been identified as a softball player at a specific age group. So the assessment, as you guys mentioned, will drive the results of this and factor all of that in. Am I right? Yep. Everything is, we have a scoring system that's catered towards the softball world. We have multiple D1 softball programs that have been testing it and numbers are good. They're reporting good numbers. So. Yeah. Last question I saw there. Uh, how many sessions come with one program? A program is essentially four weeks of hitting and the coach and the player and or will identify how many days per week that player is going to hit two, three or four days based on the number of days. The volume of a drill will be adjusted. Is that fair to say? Correct. And as we go along, uh, our, our plan is to, as the off season, and we talked about the seasons briefly, but uh, to literally build templates for time of year. Um, every, again, everything was, was built here with the, the work Bobby and I and Dustin have done, professional hitters have done, college hitters, high school hitters. We're trying to build progressions for hitters leading up to their seasons because uh, the objective is to get them ready for their opening day. So, um, you know, again, we're not trying to be right. So we, we, we're going to like flex to other people who um, if they have their own visions and thoughts and ideas of, uh, of how they want to do things, that's certainly fine by us. Um, again, we're trying to provide a tool that can help everybody and help the baseball preservation society. I love it. Uh, well, I, I just want to add one thing to that. There, yep. there might be, a, there might be a tendency for some people to be like, Oh, I'll just do the four day program because we'll just do the four day. Cause it's more days. The, the structure of the program will change. If, if that hitter can only come in two days a week, then do the two-day program because the way the priorities are selected and the way they're built, it'll be more beneficial to them to do the two-day program. So they're built specifically with 
with that consideration of mine. So don't just pick the four day because it's like, oh, it's more days, it's better. That's not the case. Do the days that's most appropriate. Yeah, I think ultimately to answer that question, a program could be uh, eight hitting sessions or 16 at this point, right? They can choose between that. And again, can be done at the facility, at the hit tracks or at home, whatever the means are. Um, all right. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, Chris, Bobby, Dustin, I appreciate all of the insight. We are extremely excited about this program. Again, just update your software, do it now, and it'll be within uh, the administrator tab. Um, and I think there's going to be a lot of good stuff coming.